Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today on Health Considerations in Impact Assessment. My name is Bridget John, and I work for the International Association for Impact Assessment, or IAIA. I will be moderating today's webinar, but before we get started, I have just a few items of housekeeping. First, the webinar is being recorded, and it will be made available after the event today. You will receive an email a day or two afterwards, as soon as the recording is available, uh, giving you a link to connect to it. There will be time at the end for questions, and you'll see on your control panel to the right that there is a box for questions. Feel free to type in questions at any time throughout the webinar, and we will be addressing those at the end. There are slides uh, for today's webinar are available in the handout section on the right-hand screen. And there are a few other relevant handouts there available as well. Our presenter today is Francesca Villiani. She is the head of public health at International SOS and a Chatham House Fellow. She's a specialist in public health and crisis management with over 20 years of working experience. At International SOS, she oversees the capacity building for and delivery of health impact assessment and public health programs for the extractive and energy sectors, as well as for mega infrastructure development. Earlier this month at II's annual conference in Montreal, Francesca was given II's 2017 Individual Award for her sustained and significant contributions to the field of health impact assessment. So you will be interacting today with one of the best. Before I turn it over to Francesca, we would like to uh, do a quick poll to get us started here. And so what we would like to know is how many of you consider yourselves health experts and what, how many of you would consider yourselves as impact assessment practitioners. So please click on one of the answers on your screen. How would you mainly define yourself as a health specialist? In impact as an impact assessment practitioner or other? How would you define yourself? As a health impact assessment, an impact assessment practitioner, or as an other? We will give this a few more seconds before we'll close it. Three, two, one. So we see that 14% of our listeners are consider themselves as health specialists, 61% impact assessment practitioners, and 25% consider themselves as other. So with that, I will turn our presentation over to Francesca. Thank you very much, Jennifer, and welcome everybody to today's uh, webinar. Um, the discussion today will be very much an introduction and discussion about health inclusion in impact assessment. This is the agenda for today, but just to be sure, this is what we are going to discuss mainly. Um, the focus is on projects, so there will be no discussion about health application in uh, policy program and plans, as well as no discussion about health inclusion in strategic environmental assessment. Most of the project or the examples are coming from low and middle income countries. This is because where my expertise is, uh, but what we draw from this experience we can apply also to other contexts. There will also be no discussion about occupational health or quantitative risk assessment, not because these are not important, but because these are uh, so big issues that need to be discussed independently. So before we start to discuss health impact assessment, we need to come up with clear definition that we can use consistently throughout the webinar and then in the impact assessment process. And although most of us know what health is and we all know that it's important, it's important to work with a definition that we all can agree uh, upon. This is the definition included in the preamble of the Constitution of the World Health Organization. It's now a 70 years old definition, but it's still very much valid. And as you can see, health is a very positive concept. It's a state of complete well-being. And it's not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. I think this is very important because quite often when I review impact assessment report and I look at the health section, the focus is not so much on health. The focus is on disease. The focus is when health is missing and when people are sick. Now disease are an absolutely key component of health impact assessment, but the reality is that 
exactly because health is a positive definition, disease is when health is lacking. So they provide only one part of the explanation and one part of our assessment. So if health is a positive definition and disease is just a component, how is health uh, shaped? How is health determined? Well, this is a fuzzy pie chart that's been put together by some other colleagues at uh, IAIA, and although the numbers are important, these are just indicative, so you shouldn't take them uh, as a uh, key um, reference. Uh, these are the five building blocks of our health status. Genetics or DNA, DNA is what you are born with. Then there are the individual uh, level risk factors, and these are your habit and your attitude. Do you smoke? Which kind of food do you eat? Uh, do you exercise? And then there is the social determinants of health or socioeconomic status and your uh, opportunities. These are very important. As you can see, they are one of the majority of your uh, determinants. And it's like, which kind of wage do you have? Which kind of work do you do? And then there is environment in place or the environmental determinants of health. Where do you live? Uh, which kind of water do you drink? Which kind of exposure do you have? And then there is the healthcare services, which are also very important and are different depending on where you live and can play an important role in keeping you healthy. So as you can see, health is not a monolithic issue, it's not something that we can define in absolute terms, but it's a composite uh, indicator in the company status. We can use the fuzzy pie chart or health specialists use uh, this diagram, which is called, known as the rainbow of the determinants of health, is uh, a little bit more detailed than the previous uh, pie chart. And one of the reasons why I like it is because it just gives you some uh, feeling and hierarchy about the relationship between the determinants of health. And with hierarchy, I don't mean that something is more important than others. It's just that in health, there is uh, not so much as a direct chain change, but change occur over a pathway. So if you took at the center of the diagram, we have uh, your DNA, your uh, genetic patrimony, and then there are the individual lifestyle uh, factors. So, for example, do you smoke? Yes, it's your choice if you smoke, but the reality is that a lot of things around you make this choice uh, more likely or less likely. For example, if there are policies where you live or where you work that you can smoke, if there are taxation on the cigarettes, this always influences the ability of everybody to make a decision that is more healthy or less healthy. This is important because when we talk about health impact assessment, the reality is that we need to look at the interaction among the determinants of health, not only to understand the impact, but also to come up with management plans. Um, I've introduced the PASI chart, I've introduced the rainbow determinants of health, we will introduce other, like the environmental health area. So it doesn't really matter which kind of um, system you use, which kind of diagram you use. The important part is that it does uh, resonate with the community you're talking to. This, for example, comes from the First Nations in Canada. They've done their own mapping of the social determinants of health. And as you can see, issues like control of resources or um, uh, self-determination are included as determinants of health. When you use uh, a matrix or you use definition, you need to make sure that these are relevant and meaningful for the community you talk to and you work together. Otherwise, you will miss a big component. So what is health impact assessment? We have discussed health and this determinant. Let's consider what is health impact assessment. This is a definition that comes from the IAEA special publication, but is consistent with other definitions used worldwide. And health impact assessment is a combination, is a box of procedure, method, and tools. It doesn't have to be understood as an independent and parallel process that run autonomously or standing alone from the environmental impact assessment. They can be absolutely integrated. The important component here is to consider that the process should look systematically at all the potential impact and should look at the one intended as well as the unintended. And 
An important aspect of the health impact assessment is not only the identification of the impact, but also how these are going to be distributed within the population. And this is important because from a health perspective, um, groups and people can be not only socially vulnerable, but can also be physiologically different. And therefore, the distribution of the impact among the different groups is an absolutely key characteristic of health impact assessment. And finally, as other impact assessment, the focus is in identifying um, measures to manage those effects, so a management plan. Health impact assessment as a practice is also supported by values. These are the recognition of human rights, democracy, equity, sustainable development, and ethical use of evidence. This is quite important because all the health impact assessment practitioners worldwide have subscribed to these values the moment they are going to, to carry out a health impact assessment. HIA is used worldwide. Uh, the practice is very different. Uh, there are different types of regulations. There are different uh, use and different aim, but it's not restricted to any specific geographical location. You can find experience with HIA um, in every country around the globe. So what are the triggers? Why do we do health, impact health in impact assessment? The main free uh, regulatory requirement are the international funding requirements, the national one, and company uh, ones. And this we will address them one by one. But other reasons for doing health and impact assessment is very much dependent on uh, the interest in identifying the positive impact and to ensure that the project can contribute in a positive way to local health and well-being. This is especially true when companies are interested in further supporting community investment project or other type of investment, either through their CSR or through foundation they collaborate with. The same is true for projects that are known to have a long-lasting negative community health impact and uh, because of their extension or because of their footprint. So even though there might not be a legal requirement, it's a good practice to carry out a community health impact assessment. This can be the case of major mining project or water dam. Talking about international funding, most of you are probably familiar with the IFC performance standard. The standard number four is on community health, safety and security. The standard itself, the guidance, as well as a book about introduction on health impact assessment have been developed by IFC and are valid uh, up to today and through the revision of the whole uh, performance standards. Every project worldwide that borrow money from either IFC or from some of the Equator principal financial institutions need to be complying with performance standard number four. Although IFC was one of the first banks to come up with a specific standard on community health and safety and security, other development financial institutions and regional banks today have uh, developed community health and safety safeguards. For example, the Asian Development Bank or the European Investment Bank. And more and more, each individual uh, development institution is coming up with specific safeguards and uh, guidelines about the health inclusion in their impact assessment process. Then there are the national requirements, which compose a very important aspect of our health impact assessment. There are different types of legislation that you need to be aware of. There might be a legislation within your environmental impact assessment or your health impact assessment practice. Uh, this can be at the federal level, like for example in the United States or the European uh, New Directive of Environmental Impact Assessment that specifies that health need to be included. But it can also be at the country level. We have seen, especially Asian countries, have developed an extremely good practice of uh, health impact assessment. Or it can be at the sub-national level, so at the state level, at the regional level. So you need to look both at the Ministry of Environment and Ministry of Health for specific requirements on impact assessment. But the same can be true for your sector. Mining code or other natural uh, resources, specific legislation might ask you to look at the health consequences of these sectors. Or you can have health legislation, especially associated with certain type of activity, that ensure that you need to look at health within your impact assessment. Or other type of legislation like water quality or labor and welfare. This is normal practice within environmental impact assessment. Uh, 
A further important uh, component is the one of company. More and more private companies have embraced health impact assessment as a uh, part of their uh, requirement. This, for example, as the health uh, impact, um, the health performance indicators, IOGP and DPECA. IOGP and DPECA is International Oil and Gas uh, Industry Association. And as you can see, both health impact assessment and uh, public health are uh, key indicators. They are not uh, the best performing ones, but you can see there has been a better uh, a trend and an increase in their um, performance over the years. This is important because if company have their own uh, requirement for health impact assessment, then you will need to fill them. But then it also means that they are much more aware of what health impact assessment is. So, we discuss about health, the determinants, and health impact assessment as a process. But why do we need to include health in impact assessment? If at the end of the day, um, we know that uh, quite often in the impact assessment we have are really good. Well, one of the issues is that health, as we have discussed, is a dynamic status. It's not something given, it's not something fixed. And as it has happened with other issues, when a project arrives, it generates impact and changes in, uh, in a given context. Um, unless you look at this as a dynamic process, you will miss part of the, of the, of the impacts. And if a project arrives and change the greater impacts on the local community or um, on the local context, this the change situation can come back and generate problem to, to your project, so it can generate a risk. We know it from the environmental perspective in terms of, for example, water availability. If the water goes down and there is less for the community, there might be less for the project. We know also that social unrest in the community can generate project delay. And health is absolutely the same issues. It's a dynamic issue. Unless we understand how the project is going to create health consequences for the community, we might not see how the uh, project is going to be impacted itself. I mentioned at the beginning I was going to use um, some example uh, and different framework. This is the environmental health areas. This is uh, what IFC recommend to use when you do a health impact assessment. It's not very different from the social determinants of health and the rainbows. It's just to organize all the health issues in a different way. As you can see, the first uh, five are very much disease oriented and organize the disease according to different groups and then move to other type of uh, issues, so more towards the determinants of health, including environmental determinants of health, such exposure to potentially hazardous material, the social determinants of health, and then the health system. When do you need to start considering health? Well, my recommendation is as soon as possible, so at the screening level. Uh, you might not have all the competencies required, but it's, a, it's an important moment to start to consider how your project might have positive and negative consequences on the health perspective. So, um, you don't need to look at absolutely everything, but there are a few aspects that are, uh, that are important. For example, you need to look at the corporate requirement and legal uh, and the legislation. You need to start gather health information and you need to consider where is your project located, which kind of community, are there any vulnerable group and it's going to be influx and resettlement. And as mentioned before, vulnerable groups from my perspective means something that might be different from the social perspective. For example, in, uh, in health, children are considered vulnerable not only because of agency or social issues, but because compared uh, to equal body weight in adults, they breathe more air and they consume more water and more food. So if there is any contaminant in any one of these compartments, children will be disproportionately affected. And this is a physiological issues that need to be considered when we look at the impact assessment. Same is true for pregnant women or for elderly people that might be more sensitive to heat change or to drought compared with others. Other issues that are important to consider at the screening is the fact is if the environmental footprint that you are considering for your environmental impact assessment is consistent with the health and social uh, footprint. You might identify that some uh, health impact occurring in a 
footprints that are different from the environmental ones. It also allows you to identify key stakeholders that might not be there if you don't consider health as an issue. A clear example is doing an impact assessment in, a pro in an area where there are um, cultural practice that makes sure that certain diseases are dealt exclusively in a traditional way and not in biomedical uh, Western settings. Therefore, you need to include your traditional healers and you need to discuss this practice, otherwise you will miss a component of the process. So, this is what you understand and you try to gather at the screening level. Once you have identified what you want to include, then you go through the different phases, exactly as you do with everything else. The importance of ad addressing it at the screening is that you ensure that this is uh, done step by step throughout your impact assessment process. And as you can see, this is coming from the health impact assessment guidance of IOGP PIECA. Health is fully in, uh, integrated in all the other phases. It doesn't matter where you arrive. If you enter and you have to do an impact assessment and you are beyond the screening phase, you still should start from the beginning to identify everything that you can uh, do to discuss to include health. Now, we have discussed about health and determinants, health impact assessment as a process, and the reasons about the importance of including health in impact assessment. But we need to be clear about what does it mean to include health and how we handle health. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that often the report of uh, impact assessment report uh, focus too strongly on the, on the disease. Um, and that's the case. Another problem is that quite often when I review a report, I see that data and information is dumped there without necessarily an explanation or a provision of a context. Now, this is a picture, uh, well, it's in Danish, so I don't know how many of you can understand it, but this, uh, unless I've explained to you the context, it will not be very meaningful. But this basically means that uh, these specific type of vegetables cost $2 per asparagus. Now, depending on where the country you are and which kind of uh, value you give to this, you might find it very cheap or very expensive. The point is that if I don't provide you the context for uh, understanding the information, you will not know what to do about it. And this is the same issues happen quite often with health data. If you look at the pie chart here, for example, um, from health perspective, and this is done by a health center, so it, it is a health data, it says that 42% of the people visiting this specific health center have malaria. Now, for me, when I have to do the health impact assessment, this information doesn't tell me very much because I don't know what this data represent. It's not the burden in the community. It's not divided by age or gender. It doesn't provide me a denominator, so I don't know exactly how many people I'm talking about. It doesn't tell me if the doctor has done a test or if this is the number of people with uh, fever. So an information totally outside of context and without comparison, I don't know what does it represent and I don't know how reliable it is. Because this is the number of people visiting the health center, but we don't even know if the people in the local area all go to the health center or they go to some other practitioners. So when we talk about health indicators, what do we talk about? What is the discussion? If your uh, population is a great population, the health indicators need to help you to understand existing health condition, they need to, to help you to understand the needs, to assist with the prediction of impact, so how the interaction and the changes are occurring at the determinants of health, you need to inform your management plan and to support a monitoring process. So to give you some uh, example, this is a health impact assessment of a gas project located in a desert area. Uh, we conducted an epidemiological survey in the community and we took a, a samples of uh, anemia, hemoglobin level in women and in children. What we found out was the fact that uh, the poorest women had also the highest level of anemia and they were located in the desert, not in town. When we investigated this further, we understood the reasons behind these differences and we could develop a management plan that was looking specifically not at women in general, but at women coming from a specific type of community and located in the desert. So it was in uh, understanding the health condition in order to properly manage the potential impact. 
And it's not only about managing, it's also about reporting and monitoring how your project is doing. This is uh, from an article done by other IIA colleagues. They conducted two surveys, one at the baseline and one four years later, to see how the communities were performing. And they used uh, not only community compared with themselves, but also com communities compared with uh, other villages that were selected for comparison. The important part here is that the communities four years later were doing better off than at the beginning of the project or compared with the comparison villages. This is a very important information to have and to report because not only means that your management program is uh, functioning, but it also means that your project is very successful. Now, you have 12 environmental health areas to consider. Each one of them has several disease and determinants of health. You need to understand how good are your secondary data, how reliable they are, and if they can be used. If they cannot, then you need to go and do primary data collection, as the two cases we have just seen. However, primary data collection and observation can mean many different things. You can do from a direct observational study to qualitative study to epidemiological study or quantitative, uh, other type of quantitative measures. You need to understand very early on which kind of issues you're going to investigate and how you're going about to use the data and also how you're going to use them throughout your management process. A final issue that is really important from health data perspective is the fact that uh, when we conduct any kind of data research or any kind of study involving human subjects, we need to develop a research protocol and to get an ethical approval from the health authorities. This is specific for health issues. There are international guidelines, there are ethical code of conduct regarding these issues. And most ministries of health worldwide have their own procedures. I have included some reference at the end. But this is something that you need to consider in your impact assessment process because it can take some time. This, for example, this um, diagram comes from a study uh, with an impact assessment we have done in Papua New Guinea, where we waited more than six months to get ethical approval for, uh, for conducting an epidemiological survey. This, of course, if it's not put in your timeline, will create a serious delay in all your process. So, we have looked at health, we look at impact assessment. Let's look at some of the examples of health inclusion in impact assessment. I will not go into specific issues like matrices and um, significance or division. The health impact assessment can function exactly like your environmental and social impact assessment. We use the same uh, very similar tools. And uh, in the references that I've included at the end, you can look at a different methodology. What I want to do now is just to give you a flavor of uh, the different typology of health impact assessment that you can uh, that you can have this is a project in uh, in china where there was a forest plantation in one district and then um, an industry processing uh, plant in another district when the health impact assessment was carried out um, all the other studies were already finished, both the environmental and the social one, as well as the resettlement action plan was already completely carried out. As you can see, the number of issues that we have addressed are, uh, are many and are different. We look at the environmental health areas at the beginning and then throughout the process we identify these as the main issues. And the issues are also not all uh, the same in every part of the project. The spread of vectors, the spread of zoonotic disease, and the risk of introducing and reintroducing uh, diseases were mainly related to the plantation because of the uh, condition, the housing condition of the people working there, and because a lot of the workers that were going to work there were returning workers from uh, Africa where there has been a recent outbreak of yellow fever. Now this is important as uh, yellow fever vaccination is not a regular practice at the moment in China. This could have created an absolute uh, uh, nightmare scenario. Other issues were not related to the plantation. For example, the increase of traffic injuries was associated with the transport of material between the plantation and the, and the plant. The risk of disease transmission like HIV and STI was especially related for the 
for the processing factory. The complicating uh, dimension here was that in China there are very specific requirements about the way and the who can conduct HIV AIDS study and this uh, testing and these are exclusively the local epidemiological unit no private company or no clinics can carry out a test and if foreigners are identified HIV positive they can be expelled Again, these are all information you need to be aware of as part of your management plan because not only you are going to create a potential impact in the community, you are going to have serious health issues for your project. Another problem that we identified was the fact that all the emergency response plans that were put in place didn't look at health in any aspect. So health was completely missing from all the emergency response plans. So health can be a very vast issue that require different type of specialists and different type of disciplines. The import, and that's why it's important to include in the issues very early on in the process. Um, this was a, a mining project in a rural part of uh, Indonesia, it was a relatively uh, protected uh, area where we didn't expect a lot of massive uh, migration. However, early on, already during the screening, STI, sexually transmitted infection, were considered a potential very negative impact and they were included systematic in the integrated impact assessment. During the scoping phase, we identified that there has been a recent dramatic increase in the number of AIDS cases in the country. What we investigated and discovered was the fact that the increase of number was not necessarily due to an increase in, uh, in cases, but was the fact that the Ministry has put in place a better system for detecting and testing and reporting. So again, the importance of understanding the information you are dealing with. The country was getting better at identifying the cases and therefore HIV and AIDS were becoming a problem for the country and therefore also for the project. Because of the sensitivity of the issues and where the project was located, uh, we uh, contracted a, a specialized uh, Indonesian expert who was doing working on HIV AIDS and carried out different consultation and we identified and divided the group. So it was high-risk group, mainly transgender and commercial sex workers, then we consulted with the villages, divide, divided by age and gender, so with uh, school, boys and girls, as well as uh, adults, and with the local health workers. The focus of this information was very much to understand the power, power dynamic and the local market for sex. This was because we needed to understand how this was functioning in order to develop relevant um, management uh, plans. We identified the, the main at-risk group that were both the transgender and the local uh, men because they didn't use any type of uh, protection and they were having uh, sex with uh, high-risk uh, partners. The management plan was uh, organized both for the workers, so within the project, but also together with the local health teams and the schools and the health promotion activity were completely consistent with the national HIV strategies to ensure that they, we were supporting the local ministries. As we discuss, health impacts occur through a pathways and the different groups need to might have different uh, consequences. And this is a project in Madagascar where we identified uh, malnutrition as a problem. What we also identified was that the causes leading to malnutrition were different. For the people living in urban area was inflation because the project has dramatically increased the price. In rural area was deforestation because the people were depending more on forest for their uh, subsistence. We also identified single mothers at absolutely no resilience capacity. Any, uh, any negative change would have been dramatic for them. They needed immediate support. So to understand the impact is the same is malnutrition, but the pathway is very different. This obliges us to work uh, coherently and in an organized manner with all the other departments of the company. This is a health impact assessment of the um, dam bridge of the Mont Polymine in Canada. Uh, colleagues have done a health impact assessment of this uh, disaster and they looked at how um, different aspects generated emotional stress which was a triggering factor for a lot of negative health issues. As you can see the importance of creating a, a diagram or creating a pathway, an understanding of how event 
generate a change that is leading to health outcomes. Quite often in health there is not a direct flow. It's not that you do A and the consequences B. So these diagrams are absolutely fundamental to understand the changes and therefore the management uh, plan. And this is something that you do together with the local community or through consultation with them. So health impact assessment is a very participatory process. Another important aspect to consider is that if health impact assessment is done well, um, it goes beyond health. The disease has just become one of the main risks that the project has to manage. This is a mining project in the DRC. When we arrive, we look at cholera as a potential impact because of the history. There has been regular outbreak in the past, and over the last few years, every year there was a serious outbreak of cholera. There were all the conditions for uh, further spread of the disease, there was a lack of proper sanitation, no access to potable water, there was periodic flooding of the local river. This is the Democratic Republic of Congo, there was internal migration of population coming from conflict affected areas so they could have carried the, the cholera with them and there was absolutely no response capacity within the district. Um, we made a case and the company included cholera in their project risk register. The result of this was that this didn't become only an issue managed through health intervention, so of course we created capacity at the local level to respond to a possible case of uh, cholera. But the company invested heavily in water, in sanitation, in environmental cleaning of the river, in providing uh, strengthening to the municipal authorities to control uh, the quality of the environment. So the health issue was, the, the, the cholera of the disease was the problem, but it was managed in a, using a comprehensive approach. A final issue that is also quite often um, not fully address is health and resettlement. Although the resettlement action plan are not necessarily part of the impact assessment, quite often the two things go together and data collected for the impact assessment can inform also the resettlement and action plan. If we look at resettlement, a lot of the issues that are mentioned in the environmental health areas can also influence resettlement. If we can look at livestock, for example, if the local community relies on livestock as part of their livelihood subsistence and this is going to be relocated, we need to consider a zoonotic disease. But community cohesiveness and organization is a very important social determinant of health. We know quite often that resettlement can generate problems and people can be stressed or emotionally distraught. The provision of services is an important part. Where do community live before and where are they going to do, live after? How the houses are designed? Are they screened for uh, mosquitoes if this is an important uh, risk in the area? How are the toilet or the water access going to be done? Again, it doesn't mean that health has to be fully completely done for a, a resettlement plan, but involving a health specialist or having a consideration about the health consequences early on is very important for your resettlement action plan. Concluding, I like this picture very much because uh, for me it does really describe what is the challenge of doing health in impact assessment. These are uh, blind uh, monks trying to understand what is in front of them and the approach they've used is to go and touch and each one of them is touching a different part of the elephant. Now. Depending on where they are uh, looking at, they might draw very different conclusions of what, they are, uh, what is in front of them. And the only way they can make sense of the information that they gather is if then they come back together and discuss and put together the picture by working together. And health is exactly the same issues. We need to work together with the social team, with the uh, environmental team, with the group of health experts that can be involved in order to make sense of the information we gather and to understand how the project is going to influence the health of the local community. And another aspect we need to consider is the haggling probable. Quite often when I do health impact assessment and I identify some potential uh, risk, I'm told uh, this is not going to happen, this is not the case here, this is haggling probable. Well, I accept that um, 
highly improbable is um, you know is is a is a category is also true that highly improbable can still occur and can still happen uh, this is a map of emerging and uh, re-emerging infectious disease emerging and emerging infectious disease are diseases that have not uh, taken full uh, Foot in uh, in the area, so either they are expanding the geographical scope or occurring in areas where they have not seen uh, before. However, the number is increasing, and this is exactly what you miss if you look at health in a static way. If you don't look at the changes and how things can change uh, by altering the local uh, environment, the lo being this uh, biological, physical, or social. And something that was considered highly improbable was the Ebola outbreak we had in West Africa. As highly improbable it was considered, we now realize that the health consequences and the social and economic and human were extremely high. So don't disregard something because it looks improbable if the consequences are very, very serious. I think it's difficult to describe how health is properly included, but it's very easy to describe how health is not properly included in the report. Um, health is not properly included if is a subset of the social uh, impact assessment. There is um, the social determinants of health are an important part of the determinants of health, but are one part of the picture. If you don't include, uh, if you don't look at the environmental determinants of health, you have already missed a, missed a big part of it. Everything related to exposure to potential pollutant is completely missing. Um, part of water is completely missing. The housing dimension is missing. So health has to look at both social and environmental. If the baseline only describes morbidity and mortality, we mentioned at the beginning disease is when health is missing. So is an important component, but we need to go beyond this to ensure that we understand health. If your health baseline doesn't provide any discussion on how this is included, um, how reliable on uh, this data, which kind of information is provided, if they don't put them in context with the local setting, then your health baseline is, uh, is missing of important part of information. And if health and safety consideration have not made to respect with cross-cutting issues, we talked about ecosystem services, but animal health, livelihood, resettlement, emergency response, this doesn't mean that health has to be uh, done for every single component, but a discussion about the health consequences and what does it mean from a health perspective, these cross-cutting issues is an important dimension of a health impact assessment. So my conclusion and recommendation are very simple. Community health will be, will be the long-lasting legacy of any project. I'm not saying that are the most important, but when the jobs are done, when the environment is either restored or damaged, the community that we live in the area, even 20 years later, will complain about health issues. And this because some health issues may occur immediately. Increase of malaria is something that you can detect immediately. But other issues, and not only associated with pollution, but also HIV AIDS, have repercussion also in the generation to come. So these are long-lasting legacy. Health should always be included. Wherever there is a community, there is going to be an impact, and this can be positive or negative. And health inclusion is much more than just asking the local doctor to provide some indicators. It does require a multidisciplinary approach. And I think that all of us can do an effort to be do better health impact assessment. You can either involve an health expert early in the process, or you can just become a health expert yourself. And this is just the first introduction to the topic. Join the health section is a very dynamic section. We have a lot of discussion ongoing, and you can uh, require you can ask assistance for whatever you need. And with this, I want to thank you everybody for your uh, for listening today, and uh, I'm looking forward to have further discussion and questions from the webinar. Thank you very much, Francesca. That was an excellent presentation. We are going to go ahead and start asking some of the questions that have been posed by our audience. Just a reminder that there is a questions 
bar in the control panel for your GoToWebinar screen on the right, usually on the right side of your screen. So feel free to type your questions there at any time. So Francesca, uh, the first question we have comes from Juliana, and she asks how the company, how are companies carrying out projects in developing countries dealing with the limits of responsibilities? And she clarifies by saying sometimes they have to implement programs and even build infrastructure where they don't exist, but this is primarily a responsibility of the local, regional, or federal governments, it's clearly not their core business. So how are companies dealing with those issues? Yeah. Um, we need to be clear on uh, one part. The health impact assessment look at the impact generated by the project. If we go back to the slides uh, where I was looking at the dynamic, the main responsibility of the project is very much to ensure that no negative impact as much as possible are done and any positive is maximized. However, company also recognize that they work in contexts where there are existing needs that are not satisfied by uh, the uh, governmental or the local authorities. And therefore is a question of discussion that is needed between the company, the communities and the local authorities on who can do what. Project that are, I've been working on projects that have a lifespan of 50 years and I think that uh, all these projects uh, support initial infrastructure or capacity building but the idea is that you need to do it in a way that is going to be sustainable and there are mechanisms to do it and companies have uh, done it but it's clear that the division of role and responsibility need to be done early on in the process. At the same time we have seen some of we'll see the article in which monitoring is done and if uh, companies start and collect data and use them for monitoring purpose they can always go back to the authorities in the community and show what has been their contribution and this is an important uh, part of the discussion to be able to quantify and demonstrate that things have been done can be a way also of obtaining support. All right. When is HIA usually done? Is it alongside the RAP? Can it be done as a part of RAP? Um, with RAP, I suppose we talk about the resettlement action plan. Um, health impact assessment should be able to inform the resettlement action plan because uh, uh, resettled uh, communities can be vulnerable and can be supported. So ideally it's done yeah, before or in parallel with the resettlement uh, action plan. When this is done, and for example, when we have done uh, primary data collection uh, in projects where there was a resettlement, we look at uh, um, taking and ensuring that the resettlement, resettled community had, we identified some indicators like nutritional status that could be monitored. And this was a way to ensure that the resettlement was delivering positive uh, results. These are quantifiable uh, indicators. Unfortunately, quite often the health people uh, or the health specialists are not included in the wrap. All right. How do you deal with community concerns that attribute serious health problems to project impacts? For example, skin rashes, cataracts, severe cough, ostensibly as a result of oil spills? Ooh. Um, good. There are community concern and health are increasingly the main part of uh, the discussion. Um, they, they are extremely valid. Um, some of these concerns are real and others are uh, motivated by fear. So my suggestion and my recommendation is uh, are to be totally open and transparent and if some issues are not uh, clear they need to be investigated. Unfortunately, quite often companies are not um, looking at health data. If we go back to the point of using secondary data to do your baseline and your secondary data are not clear, you will never be able to use this data in any discussion with the local communities. So the best way to look at this is to conduct and to collect primary data before the project starts. By doing this you can also understand com community concern and address them. Quite often it's just enough to provide information that explain to them uh, 
why certain things are occurring and what the problem are and then keep the discussion going. So the, the complaints um, about uh, skin rash or other issues are also due to the fact that the community have not been informed properly about what is going to happen. All right, Lynn asks, how do you deal with inadequacy of health indicators or data when local authorities or the proponent do not or cannot provide enough resources for collecting primary health data? Mm. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> thanks Lynn, that's absolutely the majority of the case. We hardly have uh, enough resources and data are always inadequate. But I think that um, we need to acknowledge the limitation, so we also need to start to say, well, we don't have a health baseline. Um, me, for example, when I do an impact assessment, I don't want to call it health baseline. I call it community profiling, because baseline does give you the idea that this is the status before the project started, and you can use it for monitoring your reporting. It's not the case. The reality is that you, you can find some data, Depends, you just need to be clear on what they represent. So they might not represent your community, they might represent the district. And we need also to become smarter on how we are going to collect data. We might collect, um, we might do a household survey with the social team. Well, we need to find a way in which the social uh, group and the household survey ask questions that are meaningful from a health perspective. If we look, health issues have very, very defined type of indicators. So we ask questions that can be compared with existing natural indicators. And we need to push company uh, more and more to, to find the money to collect this health data because the reality is that quite often there is money for collecting environmental data. Uh, there need to be money for collecting health data. We might not want to collect everything. We might want to select uh, some of the most important ones. And nutrition is a relatively cheap indicator to collect and is a very valid indicator that can prove health as well as a socioeconomic uh, and environmental condition. Alvaro wants to know what kind of barriers or limitations come up while working in different countries with different legislations, specifically with developing countries. Um, the reality is that in most countries uh, where I've been working, there are no specific legal requirements for health impact assessment. If we exclude some of the Asian countries, mainly in Africa as well as in many Latin American countries, there are no health requirements. So uh, one use the the patent, one can use the IFC as a guiding. Uh, Principle. One of the main limitations is that uh, if there is no legal requirement and the company is not obliged, the reports are not made available, uh, the data that are collected are not made available, and this is a missed opportunity for, for everybody because there might be a wealth of information out there that is not used um, either for monitoring or for management uh, purpose. Um, but health is still predominantly in many of the low and middle income country, not a specific requirement of the regulation. Simone asks, is the inclusion of HIA in IA legislation a way to guarantee health in all policies in developing countries? Uh, health impact assessment is definitely required, uh, is definitely seen as a way to get health in all policy done. Is, uh, is absolutely a way forward. We know, for example, from uh, experience in certain country, I quote Estonia, but uh, because it's the first example that come to mind, um, they decided that the only way for them to, to, to ensure that projects were contributing positively to health and well-being was by including health in the environmental impact assessment. Other countries like Thailand included reference of the importance of health in their constitution and therefore health impact assessment is mandatory by itself. So there is no one solution fits all, but surely health inclusion environmental impact assessment seems the, the most a sustainable way forward, at least. Are there predictive models that can be applied in health impact assessment? Predictive models. There are. Uh, there is a lot of work done on um, quantifying uh, risk, especially of uh, uh, air pollution. Uh, the European Union has invested a lot of uh, money and research in uh, in in trying to quantify risk. The challenge of using 
models, uh, especially in low and middle income country, is the paucity of information. Models are also based on having very good uh, initial data and uh, the ability to make um, pr good predictive models. So we need to, to know a lot about the model we use. And this is quite often not the case uh, in many of the settings uh, in which we work. So at the moment is still not, uh, not a regular practice. Miguel wants to know your opinion about a legal framework in the EU. Uh, well, interestingly enough, health has always been part of the environmental impact assessment process. It was also in the NEPA regulation in the United States, which is the first one on environmental impact assessment. So the European Directive uh, is now mentioning uh, openly human health as inclusion. I think it's great. The challenge will be to see how we are going about to, to do it. Um, in Europe, not only different uh, countries have different requirements. The Netherlands, for example, they screen their policy before they are discussing the parliament for health implication. They, uh, the Netherlands is moving away now to include health also in the environmental impact assessment. Sweden has a health impact assessment process. Italy, uh, as different region have different impact assessment process. So the challenge would be very much about how do we ensure that um, each country will have, uh, you know, how we can come up with one model that is uh, applicable for everybody. Um, so it's unclear what is going to happen. There is no guidance document uh, available yet. But it will happen and this will be probably uh, a very useful uh, tool for all of us working in different settings. Grace has a two-part question. How do companies deal with cumulative impacts on health? And can HIA be considered a cumulative assessment given the complexity of the determinants of health? Oh, great. Uh, cumulative impact assessment is, uh, is challenging. In the oil and gas uh, HIA guidance, there is a chapter on strategic health impact assessment, which I think is the closest we have gone to cumulative health impact assessment. And the idea is very much to see uh, at the country level, if there is a new sector developing, and the case study used is the one in Ghana that uh, developed uh, oil uh, recently, how certain issues are going to be looked upon when we can't look at uh, individual project by project. Um, there is a proposal of how to do it and triggers and uh, results. The reality is that quite often is, uh, is not done. Uh, the, because to do a cumulative uh, impact assessment, it would be requiring to have information from all the different uh, projects uh, present in the area. At the moment, it's still up to the national uh, authorities to, to carry out uh, a cumulative impact assessment from a health perspective. Um, because of the lack of legal requirements, quite often when I do a health impact assessment, I have no information coming from the other project. So I cannot really do a health impact assessment. I know what are the mission of the project I'm looking at, especially if this is located in an industrial area, I have no visibility of the other emissions. Um, so I can't really do a community impact assessment. All right, we have time for one. Were you finished? Sorry. Yeah. One more question, and then I think we'll have to wrap it up. Francesca does a plan to address any questions we didn't get to address in the webinar live, and so she will be responding to you individually if she didn't get a chance to um, respond to it here. One last question. Do you have any thoughts on the use of traditional knowledge in baseline health surveys? is absolutely fundamental. Um, we, we can't uh, just go on with uh, what we call Western medicine approach that disregard uh, traditional knowledge. They are an absolutely fundamental component and we need to understand uh, what does it mean. There are different uh, methods and possibility, but one of the main challenges is, uh, is how to how to use it, not only in how to represent it, but it's also about convincing uh, the project proponent and the regulators of the importance of including uh, this uh, traditional knowledge in the impact assessment. Uh, quite often is disregarded as a you know, secondary importance, but it's not. Um, it absolutely needs to be included. 
Okay, excellent. Thank you all for your participation today and for being on this webinar. Just a reminder that you will be receiving access to the recording of the webinar and we will be posting it on our IAIA.org website once it's available. Also, just to let you know, there will be a brief survey as you leave the webinar. We would really appreciate your feedback as we work to develop more of these webinars and to make them more meaningful and useful to you. And so your feedback is definitely important. And so with that, thank you everyone for participating and we hope to join see you on our next webinar.